happy music. Such happy music. You can't believe it. All right. We are good to go. The Seattle Kraken might just make the playoffs again this season. They might not. We took a step back last year. This is the team at the moment. Again, we have some dudes that we didn't uh, end up signing. Still have Hogberg and Saville between the pipes. The defense is very young. But it's Letty, Addison, Cholosky, Drysdale, Michael Mastro, Domenico, Isaac, Belovo, and Nikita Sidorov as a depth option. And the forwards, again, Ovi, still here at 39 years old, his second season with us. You know, you still have like William Carlson, but then it's it's a really young team. Max Nemestikov, Marco Rossi, uh, Robert Master Simone, Atu Ratu, Thomas Bordalo, Patrick Line, Jack Quinn, Jakob Pelletier, Isaac Rosen, and like Adam Brooks and Cam Atkinson here for a little bit of depth. So we're going to see what this team can do. We are going to see what head coach John Cooper can do. Ovi is unfortunately probably going to fall short of catching Gretzky, unfortunately. But, hey, you never know. Uh, he had a season where he went to New Jersey and so I kind of derailed what he was uh, looking like. If we're being honest. Oh, goodness. Uh, Tyler, it would be on the editing doc in terms of what we made Jack Quinn, so... The link is in chat there. Let's see what happens here in the preseason. Always are always retired in 2026. Well, it's 2024, heading into 25, so we shall see. God, this music's so happy. But will it match how well this team does? I don't know. I hope so. I hope we do well. Because in terms of like tearing down this team, there's really not too much we can afford to tear down at this point. <laughs> like we just have, you know, we just have our team as it is. So it's not really too much we can do. All right, what do we got? Ryan Michael for Josh Manson. Uh, Taylor Hall is going to be out for two months, which is brutal. Chromiak's now right wing, board low left wing. September scouting update, Brad Norman is looking like arguably the best dude in the draft, which is kind of scary. Jim Lorentz, we really need to scout a little bit more. This overager, trying to get, of course, A reports on everybody. Aliu Moldal Bach, what a name. Roger Frost, great name there. All right, so we got a bunch of dudes there that we are trying to scout. And Cody Glass is now a member of the Boston Bruins. Big dubs, chat, big dubs for Curtis Hall. So that's a weird one. That is a weird one. Opening night is October 6th, so. We will have the big moment of uh, the waiver wire as well coming up here, so that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. AJ, that's rough. Understandable though, considering it was a WHL player. So. All right, what do we got? Uh, Sweden. Won the World Cup, beating Russia. Yunus Berdeen, Vasilevsky, my best goalie. World Cup MVP was Elias Pettersson. Central scouting list has Brad Norman of the Trenton Golden Hawks as the likely number one. Oh, this draft looks like shit. Unless something changes. Oh, never mind. Holy crap. All right, maybe not. This is a five-star player here in Norm Howard. And then Norman is one-and-a-half-star, three-star potential. Okay, so we know about 
a couple of dudes that might not be all that well known, including Norm Howard, who plays for the New Hampshire Junior Monarchs. Although the consensus is that he's going to be good too. So it's still way too early to know what the hell's going on in terms of scouting, but there could be some very interesting things going on. Marcus Hogberg is hurt. That's not good. Uh, how long is that injury? One to two weeks for gastroenteritis. That's not good. So Hogberg is going to be out for a week or two. Uh, Aturatu? Out for one to two weeks with a hip flexor. Uh, let's go ahead and put him on the injury list here, too. I'm gonna call up a goalie. All text. Enjoy Gears 5. I don't get to play nearly enough of it. Uh, Boothelier. Let's maybe call you up. I don't really want to risk you. Let's call up Dominic here. And we will also, uh... Actually, we don't really have to call up anybody else, so I won't risk it. So yeah, we won't, we won't risk it. Forward-wise, we're apparently okay. One of our final preseason games here against Montreal. I'll text a half. Big Gears of War fan. I spent hundreds of hours on Gears 2 back in the day. Connor Hellebuck went to Columbus finally. Two-year deal for 7.6 million, so... Would have been nice to end up with him, but he was just looking for way too much. We couldn't afford to give a goalie that much money. We're not Montreal, so... Right, catcher? All right, players need to clear waivers, so... Ooh, Trevor Zegra would need to clear waivers. Jordan Bennington is signed in Vancouver. Two-year deal for 7.4. So we have that choice to make with Trevor Zegra. Do we call him up? Or just ship him out of here? In terms of forwards, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12. I'd prefer to not lose Trevor Zegra, to be honest. So, we're going to call him up. Instead of shopping him, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 with Boardlow, 14 with Brooks. So, Zach Dean, going to send you to the Bitch Pigeons, Tanner Dickinson. And Wyatt Johnston. All of you guys go down to the Bitch Pigeons. And that should be our roster for the season. Uh, the other player on waivers was, I think, Adam Brooks. If I'm not mistaken. So, we are okay. It's Trevor Zegra. Not in danger of losing. Big question now. We see it almost every year. Will there be crazy waiver claims? Kind of hope. Hello. Okay. Yep. A lot of shit's gone down. A lot of shit's gone down. Hold on really quick. What is this chair sinking on me? It's not. Cool. All right. Well, let's just scooch up here. All right. So, my God. Okay. This is the most comfy chair in the goddamn world. But sometimes you gotta readjust. Uh, Gianni Fairbrother is two star, three star. Don't need him. Especially just a lot of people. Keandre Miller got waived. There are a crap load of players on waivers. And Marco Scandello was traded for a third. Let's take a look at the waiver wire here. Okay. Best players available, Zach Aston Reese and Sammy Blay, were both sent down. Prospect wise, Mad Shogard, Lassie Thompson, Hunter Jones. And then two and a half star, three and a half, Ronnie Attard, David Tendek. Interesting here. So right now the big question is, of course, who would go back down through waivers? If we claim a defenseman, we could risk sending down Nikita Zadorov, and we wouldn't have to worry about losing them on waivers. Forward-wise, 
I could claim someone and send down Adam Brooks. But if we claim Shogard, it would be solely to their f flip him. Uh, or we'd have to trade another one of the goalies. And Saville, who was amazing last year, or Marcus Hogberg. That is a tough call. So again, for goalies, there's pretty much no doubt about it. Mad Shogard is who we would claim. No doubt. For defensemen, as far as who could replace Nikita Zadorov, I mean, Lassie Thompson. Atard's already what he's going to be because he's 25. You got Braden Schneider. Okay. It's Shogard, Thompson. And then, I mean, forward wise, it would just be usable players. You'd be, you know, we'd be looking at Sammy Blair, Zach Aston Reese. I think it has to be Shogard, even if we end up flipping him. He's just the person to put in a claim for, first and foremost. So. Bogomo does have pretty good ratings, you're not wrong. Trent, what's up, buddy? Uh, playing some FHM. I don't know if that's just in the preseason. He had 20 points in 57 games last year. Those are just the preseason numbers. I mean, he's crushing it this preseason. He is only a two-star, though. Might not matter. All right. So. I think we have to do it. We are going to put in a waiver claim here for Mad Shogard. I don't know if I could also put in a claim for Lassie Thompson. I can. I think two is the limit. Otherwise, I'd probably look at Aston Reese or Blay. Aston Reese, you have some injury concerns. But obviously, it's like a bottom six option. He's incredibly solid. And Sammy Blay will be incredibly similar. I like Aston Reese, though. A little bit more than Blay. So, uh, no, Trent, this is uh, the waiver wire here at the end of training camp. Okay, so we've put in claims on three different players here Jogard, Thompson, and Aston Reese. If I can put on a claim on Hunter Jones as well, I might as well. And I think that would bring us up to 50 contracts, so I'm not allowed to claim anybody else if I'm not mistaken. So let's see what happens and how many of these dudes that we actually happen to get. I don't know if they'll fall to us. They might, they might not. So it's a big question here. Heading into the fifth, which is the day before regular season starts. Zach Aston Reese, Lassie Thompson, Mad Shogard, Hunter Jones, all claimed. We got all four of them, chat. We got all four of them. I actually had room for one more, but we got all four of them. So, <laughs> we have to make decisions with this roster now. Uh, Dominic Bassi, we're going to send back down to the Bitch Pigeons. We have four goalies. Obviously, we can't use waivers. Two of them have to go. Defensively, uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven with Bolu. So we have Duncan Keith, who we're going to send down to the Bitch Pigeons. We'll have to put him through waivers. Um, we're also going to look to put Nikita Zadorov through waivers as well. They were both just random free agent signings. Uh, we're going to run with that seven-man defense right there. Again, I can't flip Nick Letty. Uh, we gave him a no trade. <laughs> and then offensively, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So just Adam Brooks has to go down. Who's not bad, but Aston Reese is significantly better. It's Adam Brooks or Cam Atkinson, and it makes sense for it to be Adam Brooks that we put through waivers. 
Well, we could keep three goalies up, but we'd have to drop. Hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'd have to drop an extra forward. So I could keep three goalies, but I'd have to drop Cam Atkinson. Which isn't a horrible idea, because I can't trade Atkinson. Bagel, fair enough. Like I said, I think we'll see NBA back again. I like the idea of the my team versus chat's team. I think we'll do it again, and probably with the WNBA, because I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, although I still want to see what happens uh, with you know the players that are on the team. So I might go back to NBA and uh, just like sim like 15 years and see what happens. Okay. So at least one goalie has to go. I don't necessarily want it to be Savile. Because Savile was so good last year, but he is fourth on this depth chart. There you go, you're going to have to find out. Okay. I don't hate the idea of trying to just lose Atkinson through waivers. We have the salary cap, we're okay. We're gonna put Cam Atkinson through waivers. It's the final year of his deal anyway. And then, we have to decide the one goalie that we're keeping. As it is, I'm going to have to trade people this season. I have to, because I gotta make sure I have roster uh, contract spots filled out for some of our prospects at the end of the year. And Savile had a 929 last year. I can't possibly trade him. We have to see if that was a fluke or not. So what we're going to do is shop Mad Shogard, Hunter Jones, and Marcus Hogberg. Find the best deal for each one and then figure it out. Davos, I also saw that, which was hilarious. So let's leave that message about camp. So Montreal would give us a first round pick for Mad Shogard. Toronto would give us Gavin Bryant. One and a half star, three star. Coming off of an 80 point season with Owen Sound. Eh, I like him, but he's not that great. I'd rather have the first from Montreal if we were to shop him. A uh, 29 year old Sean Monahan, who does have an AA there. Uh, two years left at 6.3. Man, can you imagine adding Sean Monahan's offensive abilities to this team? It's an interesting one. Chicago offering Drew Cameso. The benefit to Drew is that we could probably put him through waivers. The benefit to Drew Cameso is that we could probably put him through waivers, but obviously it's a four and a half star for a three and a half star, and I don't like the optics. Detroit's offering Jan Bednar, who is a four and a half star. Again, the benefit to him is a little bit worse, but I could at least put him through waivers. New York. Damon, ooh, four-star Damon Gardner. Half-star right now, but four-star potential. Nothing special right now, though. I think I'd rather have that first. You do a lot of damage with that first-rounder. 19-year-old Elliot Stahlberg is not nearly good enough. Sean Barron's not good enough. Colton Ellis, not good enough. J.J. Peterka, not good enough. Caden Primo, not good enough. Yorkland, Dylan Grand, Andrew Carvelis, Sasha Pastujov, not bad. Clayton Keller, <laughs> Clayton Keller in a fifth. Tristan Robbins in a fifth. Justin Cote, Aaron Ekblad. Imagine adding Aaron Ekblad to this defense. He's on an expiring deal, though. Nashville, Luke Evangelista, and then a first from Winnipeg. So for Mad Showguard, I mean, we could walk away with a first-round pick. Could walk away with someone like Sean Monahan, which, eh, I'm going to rule that out. So, I mean, we could walk away with a first-round pick, Aaron Ekblad or Jan Bednar for Showguard. 
Hunter Jones. Hunter, Hunter Jones. So I'm drop the happy music a little bit here. If we shop Hunter Jones, what could we get for him to see if we could get a better deal? So Cameron Hillis in a fifth, two star, three star, meh. Zach Benson, one and a half star, three star at 19, that's not that bad. Boston with Gil Martin, two star, three star and a fifth. It's not that bad, he had 47 points in uh, 66 AHL games last year. I think I like the Benson deal more. Liam Watkins, Max Pacioretty, Nils Lundqvist, two and a half and three plus a fifth. LA offering Anton Olsen, two star, three star, and a sixth. Sean Behrens, he's a half star at 21. I don't think he's going to make it. Uh, Will Cranley in a sixth, so someone who is significantly worse. The potential's only down by a little bit. Eh. We'll go Pekka Lukanen. Doesn't really help our issue though of needing to get somebody off roster. We're in a different spot. Uh, Jakob Skarik, who is essentially the same thing. I just don't know if we could send him down through waivers. Oh yeah, Samsonov, but his contract's gonna be nuts. It's not, he's only making two million. He'd be a pure rental. So you know he'd be asking for more money. Kyler Yamamoto. And a fifth. Expiring deal for Yamamoto as well. That'd be a big money deal coming his way. A 36-year-old Claude Giroux is playing in Carolina. Colorado offering Tyler Parr. One star, three star. Arizona. Marcus Almquist. Two star, three star. Colton Smith. Semyon, crazy name. Michael Benning, star and a half, three star. Halliday, star and three star. And Pavel Bushnevich. <clears throat> so Michael Almquist, two star, three star. Probably send him down to the AHL. Tyler Parr, one star, three star. I like the Almquist deal a little bit more. Carolina offering Claude Giroux, which doesn't really help. I mean, it does help us. On the final year of a six uh, six million dollar per year deal, be a hell of a veteran to bring in. Wouldn't help us long term. Lundqvist wouldn't really help us out that much defensively. Zach Benson, one and a half, three. So I would say for. Hunter Jones. The deal would either be Claude Giroux or we get Jakob Skarik and see if we could actually have him clear through waivers. I doubt it. I don't really like any of the Hunter Jones options. And then we have Marcus Hogberg. Our starter last year. Start off with a fourth rounder from Montreal. Pretty Balsers. Oh boy. Chad Chris. Yeah, we'll be getting back significantly less. I read that wrong, too. Don't worry about it. Colt Point, Jack St. Avani, Aiden Pruder. Significantly less to get back here in a deal for Hogberg. Well. Chat, what are we thinking? He's our best goalie right now at this stage. We could get a fourth round pick for Hogberg, Claude Giroux, or Jakob Skarik, who might put us in the same exact spot as Hunter Jones. To be honest, I think it would have to be Claude Giroux for Hunter Jones. Or we get a first round pick, Aaron Ekblad, or Jan Bednar for Mad Shogard. Again, a first round pick would be great. Bednar is a four star prospect, Shogard's four and a half. Bednar is a year younger and would clear waivers. Aaron Ekblad at three and a half star would certainly improve this defense. But uh, we'd have to be able to send someone down like Isaac uh, Belovo, 
who is NHL caliber. To be honest, I'd probably try to flip Lassie Thompson. Just because he's a little bit older. Yeah, man, that's the one thing we lack right now is a true defensive leader. But again, Ekblad was on an expiring deal, so that's you know he's going to get paid big money as if he isn't already. The way I see it, the way I see it, it comes down to either a first round pick, Montreal is listed as in win now, Winnipeg also in win now. Montreal has more weaknesses than Winnipeg. Frank, that was awful. Alright, it's the first round pick for Showguard. Claude Giroux for Hunter Jones and a pure rental. Or a fourth round pick for Marcus Hogberg. Hogberg for a fourth. Jones for Claude Giroux as a one year rental. Or a first round pick for Mad Showguard, who we just picked up on frickin' waivers. One of these goalies, if not two of them, have to go. <laughs> fair enough, Frank, fair enough. I think we're going to take the first for Showguard. Literally, it's a free first round pick from Montreal. We did nothing but put in a waiver claim. And we get a first round pick from the Habs. It's too good to pass up. We are going to complete that trade. And on the flip side again, we have seven defensemen. I could keep three goalies. I could just trade Hogberg for the fourth. Honestly, I kind of like the idea of using Hunter Jones to get Claude Giroux. I'm going to do that, actually. So, for Mad Showgard and Hunter Jones, we're picking up a first round pick in Claude Giroux. And immediately, Hunter Jones has been put on waivers. So, immediately, I am going to stake a claim for Hunter Jones. <laughs> Oh my god, if this works. Oh my god, if that works. Could you imagine? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. With Brooks. Uh, let's see if we're going to pull this off and get Hunter Jones right back. Can we cheese the AI here? We have Hunter Jones back. Hunter Jones, welcome back. Let's shop you again, buddy. <laughs> Pretty sure there are rules against that, but hey, whatever. Uh, we could get another first rounder from Montreal. <laughs> Two first round picks of Claude Giroux for Hunter Jones and Mad Showgard. Who says no? A first rounder from Boston, who are listed as being in a rebuild. So I'd rather take the Boston pick. Oh my god, we're going to get a first round pick from him. New York or Boston. LA is also listed as in a rebuild. Dallas is listed as in a rebuild. Buffalo's in a rebuild. The Islanders are in a rebuild. Carolina's on balanced. Colorado's on a rebuild. San Jose is in win now. Florida is in win now. Nashville is on balanced. And Winnipeg is in win now. So let's see, only one weakness for Colorado. Five weaknesses for the Islanders. Uh, I think we're going to take that first rounder from the Islanders. Nope, the LA Kings have a weakness in every department. So we are going to send Hunter Jones out to the LA Kings for a first round pick. As we have just destroyed the computer AI here. 
So we now have uh, three first round picks in this upcoming draft. Hello, M Dog. It's not time yet. I can let you out of the room, but it's not time yet. Uh, Zadorov and Keith cleared waivers. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Cam Atkinson also cleared waivers. Cool. So uh, we have our team. That is the squad for this season. And again, because of the wheeling and dealing and the waiver wire, we have picked up Lassie Thompson, added a veteran in Claude Giroux, and now have three first round picks. I gotta let the dog out of the room really quickly. What a glorious day this is. <laughs>
Second rounder from Anaheim's not going to cut it. First rounder from Winnipeg, they're also in win now mode. Well, we are going to take that first round pick from the Calgary Flames. So, I mean, we've kind of cheesed the AI a little bit. Maybe a lot of it, but we do have four first round picks now in the upcoming draft. As mentioned, I need to, at some point this season, shed at least three contracts off of the books. Not sure who that's going to be or when, but it does need to happen. You don't have to do it now, though. Our season opener is tomorrow against Anaheim. I want to see who John Cooper rolls out there. In terms of our lines, take it from there. All right, Tyler Sagan hits a thousand career games. Looking at the injury list, can I bump up Hogberg? Whoops! Well, accidentally just put Marcus Hogberg on waivers that's not great if he goes we'll sign sorrows for the season fuck <laughs> all right uh let's call up dominic again that's that's rough all right so anaheim season opener we were gonna have uh savile and ned anyway so our lines Giroux, Carlson, Line, Aston Reese, Rossi, Quinn, Ovechkin, Nemesnikov, and Pelletier, Robert Master, Simone, Thomas Bordlow, and Isaac Rosen. The defense is Beliveau, Addison, Chalosky, Drysdale, Letty, and Thompson. It looks solid. Can we get the win is the question. Sim to the end. And it's an 8 to 2. We're winning the Stanley Cup. <laughs> oh my god. Season opener. We win 8 to 2 over the Ducks. 32 shots to 27. Good lord. Jack Quinn gets the season opener. Pelletier and William Carlson made it 3 0. Sagan going to go back. Again, he's in Anaheim now. Second period. Five unanswered goals. Claude Giroux, Patrick Line, Zach Aston Reese, Marco Rossi, and Pelletier. We did not score a single goal in the third period. Great ratings for Line and Giroux offensively. Claude Giroux, have yourself a day. Beliveau, Letty, and Quinn were all great. Uh, defensively, not a great game for Zach Aston Reese at a 43, but all in all, no complaints. Who needs, who needs Marcus Hogberg if, in fact, he accidentally gets claimed on waivers? Ah, uh, cool. I was able to claim my own player. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Hogberg. Welcome. Welcome back. Uh, Dominic, we're going to send you back down to the Bitch Pigeons. And we will bump up Hogberg back to the main team. He's got a day-to-day -day injury. And we are good to go. We play Detroit the next day. Uh, we'll just go ahead and sim this. Actually, we need to name our captains, apparently. Uh, so let's go to the mental ratings. Best leadership on the team. Not the biggest player, but Alex Ovechkin is going to be the captain. And, you know, I think Max Nemesnikov is going to be our, our future captain at this rate. Uh, so from there, Claude Giroux, congratulations. You will be the other assistant captain. For the season, we play Detroit and lose 2-1, to one, so the offense uh, completely disappeared. As Nicoletti has been hurt for two months with a neck laceration. A two-month injury for Nicoletti. That blows. Put him to the injury list, and this is why we kept Nikita Zadorov. And we will bump him up. We will bump him up. That is that is a rough set of circumstances to pick up that big of an injury already. See what happens here against Columbus. We lose five to one. Okay, so apparently uh, the first game of the season 
First game of the season uh, was a bit of a fluke as Leon Dreisaitl hits 500 career assists. God damn, for those of you who saw the... Uh, of course, by the time this is up on YouTube, it'll be out of date. But for those of you that saw today's uh, Franchise Mode episode, we saw how many points Leon Dreisaitl happens to have in the Growler series. And good lord, cut himself, cut himself shaving those sideburns. You know it. Alright, Atu Ratu. Go back to the active roster. We didn't call anybody up for you, so we should be good. Let's see, we also lost to Edmonton. Uh, Colin Delia has left the Oilers, which is fine. We march on. 1 3 0. We beat Dallas 1 0. Good stuff there. Saville has a 966 save percentage, so. Let's keep letting him play. Marcus Hogberg might get traded, because Saville out of nowhere is a cheat code. I love this guy. Philadelphia, 5-3 win. Back to 3-3. Three and three. So, I mean, again, it's pretty obvious who we'd look to trade if we tear it down. Like, Claude Giroux's gone. Just flip him. Um, get to see maybe if someone like Cam Atkinson would be willing to... Get rid of his no movement clause or no trade clause, but obviously because the door off Duncan Keith. I have plenty of guys I can uh, move off of this roster rather than prospects if need be. Beat San Jose 4 0. Lose to Toronto 3 to 1. Long way to go this season, though. Long way to go. Music is so happy. It's so happy. I don't know if I could take any more of it. <laughs> I don't know if I could take any more of it. Oh, let's see. Can't take any more of it. Get more synth wave in there, man. I'm telling you. It's the way. Alright, holy news. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on. Spanish Jad hit 600 points. Minor trade between San Jose and Calgary. Tyler Myers hit 1,000 games. Jonathan Huberdeau picked up a three-month injury with a fractured finger. Jeff Skinner hit a thousand games. As did Jeff Petrie. Kale Abramoff. Alright, so the October scouting. Brad Norman. Still the number one. Let's see though. Again, we're looking at the A's here. Anybody that has a B, like Casper Jurgensen, we gotta add. To our watch list. Christian Kim. Merrick Kratos, whatever the hell that name was. This dude. This dude. That dude's already there, so we're gonna add this dude. Bob and Malm, add you as well. Alright, cool. So we should be good. 5-7-0 oh, through our first month of the season. Maybe not completely ideal. We lose to Chicago 6-4, to four, so it still looks like, obviously, the approach of using a lot of younger players. Some unfortunate luck of missing out on some of the uh, better free agents in terms of already established players. It's putting us into a spot where, if I had to guess, we're going to be selling at some point this season. Uh, we get the development port report for the month. Again, twos are nice, but we're looking for a little bit more. Plus three for Dylan Genther. A plus three for Ansi of Evelinen. Plus three for Johan Lundgren. Drew Ovechkin and Atkinson all regressing, though. It's Hurdle and Lucas Parich were top players. Politics all good. Start an option franchise front called the Alabama Aces, Delaware Devils. Got circuit champ qualified in this RFA. Okay, no one wants to sign up. For less than a minute. It won't last forever, but not a bad deal, huh? 
not a bad deal. Let's see. Savile? I mean, in the early stages, but Savile's rocking a 939, for God's sakes. Granted, Linus Allmark is a 953. He's broken. Uh, Chicago placed Grubauer on waivers. He's two and a half because they signed Soros. Fuck you, Jeff Bezos. You're not the richest man in the world anymore. I don't need you. Uh, Grubauer. One year left. 700k. We might as well just put in a claim for Philip Grubauer and see if we can flip him. You know, free money to just be able to flip a guy. Definitely abusing it. Rafferty back from suspension. Drew Daddy hits 1250. We do get Grubauer on waivers. So let's see if we can flip Philip. Let's see. Uh, shockingly, Montreal doesn't want to give up their first rounder. Get Dan Vladar, Blake Coleman, Colton Points. Ocean. Scott Perunovic. I would really prefer a draft pick at this rate. Please. Fourth rounder from Nashville. Thank God. We'll take it. There you go, Nashville. You enjoy him. I will enjoy another free draft pick. I will abuse the system as much as we need to. We had no self imposed limitations in this run. Um, granted, again, like a Draft of Glory series or something like that could work. Something where we're a bit more limited than this. Because, yeah, I mean, there are certain mechanics you can definitely abuse on this game. But, 5, 8, and 1 for the Kraken. I want to get to December 1st, I think, though. December 1st is going to be a decent uh, cutoff point where we can take a look and say like, oh, okay, what are we, what are we doing here? Are we going to actually be able to make a run of this? Isaac on waivers, and yeah, we'll just let him go. It's not a big deal. That is not a big deal. Eight and one still. Big game coming up against Anaheim. Beat them one nothing. Saville is one of the top goalies in the league. Right, Frankie? I love that Carolina series. Even if we had like a thousand rules in it, it was fun to have that many limitations. And all the rules really kept me on my toes, too. Having to pay attention to every move that we made. So... So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Seven, ten, and one, huh? Just lost to Buffalo, which is a never a good sign. I feel this is 80 cents, but hey, what are you gonna do? Lose to Columbus, 32. I really do feel like there's a good chance we're just going to blow this team up. Which means I'm very intrigued at what we might be able to get for like Claude Giroux, um, amongst numerous other players here. So You're right, Grubauer does have an amazing save percentage. So Looks like they should have uh, kept him over signing UC Saros, who was not up there. Song or something else, man. Excuse me. 10, 11, 1. You know, we're picking up a little bit of momentum. We're only eight points back of Edmonton, but again, it's a one through eight. So right now, we are technically in a playoff spot, I think. Or we're like right on the cusp of one. But, you know, again, like if we're not going to make it, like clearly, definitively make the playoffs, we're still. With such a young squad that it's worth just tearing it down. But we're almost at the end of November. Let's 
this. Lost him too early. Holy, okay. Let's see, Shifley hits 500 assists. Roman Yossi hits 500 assists. John Carlson's gonna be out for six months with a torn ACL. Stammer hits 600 goals. Davis Payne fired his Ottawa's coach. EJ Forfar took over. Stamkos hits 1,200 points as Brayden Point hits 600. Claude Giroux had himself a four assist night. 1,000 games for Evander Kane. So a lot of players hitting big milestones. 11, 11, and 3. So I think we should be in a playoff spot here as of December 1st. November scouting reports. Let's see if we have anybody with a B here. Jim Lorenz. Add you to the watch list. Olveson, we'll add you. Robin Sizek. Robin Seat. Not bad. Not bad. Let's go. Next day is December 1st. Aaron Farley. I was going to say Farley. Farley. What's going on, man? Right, so like I said, I think December 1st is going to be a little bit too early to judge this. But I like I like where we're at. You know. I mean, again, we're not... It's a pretty young team. We're not brutal. Although right now, I mean, even Winnipeg on 19 points, there aren't that many teams that are just awful. Our dev report, again, twos are good. We're looking for threes. Aaron, I've been there a thousand times, and it's the worst decision to have to make. Guidamac gets a plus three. Big plus three for Master Simone. Just a lot of improvement for a lot of people here. He uh, Helander with a plus three, and Lundgren with a big plus four. And it's Connor McDavid and Hugo all in the felts. We're the top players of the month. So, as of December 1st, we would currently be outside of the playoff structure by two points. So again, right now I'd be leaning towards blowing it up. In terms of game ratings, I know you guys can't really see here. Actually, you might be able to, but it's like a 51, so Ratu's been pretty rough. We don't really have anybody that's horrific. So Doroff's awful offensively, no surprise. But we don't really have anybody that's horrific. Our goaltenders have been our best players, but we don't have any superstars. Like, Liney and Giroux have been pretty good offensively. And defensively, Dennis Jalowski has been pretty good. But it's pretty clear this team, the lack of a true superstar, a developed superstar right now, is really hurting us. Savile has a 9.26 in 14 games, by the way. And just to look at the stats. 23 points in 26 games for Lining, and it drops off. 18 for Giroux, 16 for Nemestikov, 15 for Quinn. Bellavo, our top scoring defenseman, 14 points in 25. Drysdale's right there. Ovi has four goals in 25 games. Ovi's cooked. Carlson with 11 points in 26. Pablo dropping the seven months. You'll love to see it. Aston Reese hasn't been great. Trevor Zegros hasn't been amazing. Atu Ratu, 14 games, one point. I don't know if Ratu's going to make it, guys. Like at every turn, he has been disappointing. At every turn. Might be worth sending back down to the miners here. One point. Fourteen games. By far the worst on the team. And you know what? We're going to do it. Uh, Ratu, you get to go down to the Bitch Pigeons. And uh, we'll call up Cam Atkinson. Kind of hang around. And be uh, a depth option. Time is it? We got time to sim to January here. Let's find out. Let's find out. January 1st of 2025. 
As it stands, we're gonna tear it down. Again. The big question is can this team kind of save themselves? Six, six, and three last month. We just lost four to nothing to Vancouver. So. Good. Pelletier is nearly back. He's still going to be out for a week or two. We might as well just add him to the injury list. That way I can get alerts every other day about whether or not he's uh, ready to come back. Let's see Toronto and Vegas. We beat the Leafs. Can we beat Vegas? David has 41 points in 29 games, roughly. We got Lafreniere up there in uh, points as well as goals. Austin Matthews is going to be up for three weeks with an injury. We have been uh, playing without Nicoletti as well, so our defense is a little bit weakened. The good thing is some of these uh, somewhat rough veteran contracts we had to sign to take up roster spots, so they're about to you know expire, thankfully. Bergeron say Pablo, I do have a video out about my thoughts on Bergeron being named captain, but I'll be nice to you and say yes, of course, I'm very happy. How could I not be? How could I not be? You know? So it's it's what everyone knew was gonna happen though for years. Like he might as well like I said it in the video. Like, Chara was the 1A, Bergeron was already the 1B. STP, ask away. Watch the vids. Watch the vids. Uh, all text, I mean, if you want to talk about... Um, you know, if you want to talk about, like, who's next in line, I mean... I don't know if it would be Posternock once Bergeron retires if someone like Charlie McAvoy is still around. Lost over Bergeron. That was never going to happen. Have any issues loading this game? I do not. Uh, if you're having... Here, let me show you. Uh, if you're having sizing issues with the game, SDP, if you go into... Well, not the options from here. Let me save this really quickly. If you're having issues with that... Oh, good for Pretty you. straightforward. Avenger, thank you for the follow, by the way. And again... Um, I appreciate the host as well. All you gotta do, options wise, go down to settings, down here, the bottom half, uh, and then just change display mode. I always go full screen. And then window size, you can change it if you want to. So, revenge, take it easy. I'll have to check out the stream sometime. I don't want to do the old get the follow, follow back thing, but I want to make sure I check out a stream sometime. Uh, so let's see. Brad Marchand hit 400 goals. JT Miller, 600 points. Kucherov, 900 points. Not bad. Brits as well. Take it easy. We'll catch you later. Uh, Kaylin Addison, day to day. Mild blunt trauma to the eye. That just sounds delightful, doesn't it? That is just on my laptop. I haven't been able to play yet. Ah, hopefully that solves it. Fingers crossed. Ooh, my eyes are getting heavy. It can never be the same. They are getting heavy. Ugh. Uh, STB. For them, some of them are. I do, uh, again, I just plugged the YouTube again, but, uh, Star, wait, Star wrecks one of a kind car. Brock Besser got in a car wreck. <laughs> um, he crashed a Maserati. Well then. Um, yeah, I do have a video out about the reverse retro. Some of them are nice, some of them are hideous. I'm glad you like the Vegas one. I think it's atrocious. For example, Hot God Duke's not playing. I know Pablo, right? Oh, no desire. No desire to play Hot. You gotta give other people a, uh, a chance to actually win sometimes, right? Can I activate Nick Letty? Can. Can I activate Pelletier? 
I can. I can! Too many players. Uh, who do we got? So we gotta send Nikita Zador off. Back down through waivers again. Fine by me. Dunno, thank you. <laughs> Alright. 16, 18, and 3, guys. I don't know if this team is gonna be worth adding to to really give us the push forward to make sure that we're contenders. Like, that's what we needed to see from this team. Prove that you're a playoff team. Prove that you're worth adding to by giving up some of our younger talent to really make a run. This team, if we add that younger talent, I don't think will be there to make a run, unfortunately. Getting a lot of that young talent. We probably just don't have like the insulation around them. Although we do have Claude Giroux, William Carlson, so. Uh, STP, let me uh, show you here in a second. Gonna ship Giroux to a team. Yeah. Claude Giroux is kind of the first guy that goes. There's certain guys like Atkinson that I can't move. Um, again, uh, like he, Letty, I signed them with uh, no trades to convince them to come here. Flash or we might lose his job. World Juniors start today. Group A, Germany, Slovakia, the US, Sweden, and Switzerland. Group B is Canada, Norway, Finland, Russia, and the Czechs. So Germany looks like this. Yikes. Uh, they have two guys who might be NHL caliber. Walter Tim and Vadim Schreiner. They're the eighth ranked team. Interesting. Uh, Slovakia, currently ranked number nine, look a little bit better. They have uh, Jakob Chromiak, the defenseman, looking really good. Andre Molnar, who's actually NHL caliber. And then a couple of two star guys Camille Lashenzi, Samuel Sizek, and Frantisek Aridzel. Not too bad. Uh, the United States looks like this Dylan Duke leading the way, Cole Eiserman. Obviously, with the amount of three stars there, a lot of guys who are on the verge of being NHL caliber. They're number two in the world. They got a decent shot at winning the World Juniors this year. Sweden, currently number three in the world, and the Sweden roster is looking damn good. Holy hell. Led by Theo Lindstein. Couple of three star, a lot of three star guys. And four players who are NHL caliber. And Johannes Seidbach, Johan Lundgren, Carl Sterner, who was one of our prospects. And Oscar Vole. Volet? Volet. I'm not sure. Yeah, Sweden's looking damn good. And then Switzerland. Honestly, looks okay. One three-star prospect in Nico Schmidt. A couple other guys. Kimo Gruber, who was our prospect once upon a time. Looking okay. Currently number seven in the world. That's tough to say who's going to come out of that group, aside from the U.S. and uh, Sweden, of course. And then Group B, Canada. Jesus Christ alive. Canada's winning gold. Connor Bedard, who is somehow still with the Regina Pats. Braden Yeager, Luke McNamara, Oliver Tolk, Sam Aremba, Brady Brinney, Braden Dubay, Macklin Celebrini, one of our prospects, Carson Wetch, and Brad Norman, the projected number one overall pick this upcoming year, all NHL caliber already. That team is stacked. Norway. Yeah. You got Eliu Moldalba leading the way, and aside from that, it's rough. It is rough. Finland. Honestly, pretty good. Emil Yarventi leading the way. Aaron Kiviharyu is there as well. He's pretty sick, already two and a half star. Rosenberg as well, one of our prospects, any joke caliber. Finland looking pretty good. Russia also pretty sick. Timur Mukhanov. Top guy there. Roman Konkov, Daniil Bu. And Lenacharsky, the goaltender that we drafted, should be leading the way for them. So as expected, the usual suspects are good. Dominic Peter leading the way for the Czechs. Yeah, the World Juniors will be interesting to look at. Shifley hits 300, Tarasenko hits 400 goals. And uh, again, the history of the league um, for
before I forget to show you. So season one, Pittsburgh won the cup. Uh, Anaheim won it in season two, Detroit in season three, and Vegas in season four. Again, this is uh, crazy to think about, but we are in season five. And it is nearly January 1st. Again, that'll be our sim stopping point. And then we're going to make that call as to whether or not we're pulling off the band-aid and just saying this team doesn't have it. Tory Krug hit 600 points. We beat Nashville 6-4. to four. Now we're fifth in the Pacific. 17, 19, and four. Maybe, just maybe? This team's worth adding to? Maybe. We got our December scouting update. Do we have any, uh, any Bs? We do. Aldal Ba. Carl Kosich. Coster Dunn, Canadian. And Eunice Lindfors is at the bottom. The player poll results are out, so amongst their peers, Nathan McKinnon voted best skater. Brant Clark voted as having the hardest shot. Braden Point is the smartest. Ross Johnston, again, is the toughest. McDavid's the fastest. Morgan Riley, the best role model. The cleanest is Marcus Nudibar. Toughest goalie to beat is John Gibson. And you have the top coach to play for yet again is Bruce Cassidy. Brant Clark. Voted on as having the hardest shot, huh? Uh, I mean, 18 shooting range. That doesn't surprise me. So one more day. Happy New Year. It is January 1st, 2025. We play Boston on that day, so maybe a Winter Classic, East versus West. Let's see what happens on the day as we might make that call maybe not though to be honest um the developmental report again twos are great threes are even better Aturatu did get a plus three going down to the bitch pigeons so that helps him a lot a couple of plus twos plus three for johan lundgren of course some of the veterans continuing to regress philip forsberg and colton point the top players so as it stands we would not be a playoff team. We are four points back of Nashville. One game shy of the halfway point. Bro, we are at the midway point of season five, so we're pretty far ahead. Fair warning. This team right now is a fringe playoff team. We're a fringe playoff team right now. think it might just be worth picking it apart. I hate to say it. Like, there's been nobody who's been great. Saville has been our best player. Giroux, Carlson, Line, Hogberg, Belovo, and Rossi have all been solid. I don't know if this is the team that we add to. I just don't think it is. Hogberg again has a 907, Savile down to a 910. Again, we got to clear at least a couple of roster spots for this team. Some random goalie here and Michael Schnattinger. What a name. I think we I think we pull it apart. I think we tear this team down as best we can. Kalen Addison now showing up as our top defenseman. Is Nick Letty on an expiring deal? He is. I think we tear it down. We could give it another month if we really wanted to, but for the most part, I, I think we kind of know. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen for us. Bethelia has a 9.28 in the AHL. First things first. Marcus Hogberg. I think we're gonna shop you. We're gonna move on from you. Uh, you have an extra year left at two million, but fourth round pick from Montreal. Pretty much exclusively looking for draft picks. 
as Montreal continues to want to give me as many picks as possible. Let's do it. Let's send Marcus Hoagberg to the Montreal Canadiens. We'll call up Zachary Bouthelier, and that'll be our goalie tandem for the rest of the year. Defensively, I can't shop Nick Letty. Addison's now 24. He's still incredibly young. Solid defenseman. Dennis Cholosky's 26. You could make the argument with Cholosky that we could aim for somebody better. Can't sign Force Mark. There's really nobody else to bring in defensively. I think we just keep it as is, but I will try to shop Nikita Zadorov as well. Just get rid of that little bit of extra depth. The sixth round pick from the Leafs I'd be willing to take. Or Chicago. Uh, we'll take it from the Leafs. Shellberg again. Right now the big thing is just clear players off of this roster. Pick up whatever assets we can. Sixth round pick from New Jersey. Yeah, I think that LA pick. Unless there's a higher option than the sixth round, that LA pick can't be matched. They are not a good team. 18, 18, and 2. Uh, so let's do it. Nikita Zadorov will be sent out to Los Angeles. And we'll also try to move Duncan Keith off of this roster, who is just completely cooked. Shockingly, though, uh, we could get a seventh from a couple of different teams here, including LA. So again, we'll complete that deal and send Duncan Keith out to the LA Kings. And that pretty much gets the roster size down to where I need it. But the big question from here, just who stays, who goes in terms of like, okay, who's gonna make it? Who's worth cashing out on their value? I think our defense and goaltending is fine. We're running a lot of younger players. We still have like Pro Cop and Del Mastro that we could call up if we had to. The big thing comes down to the forwards. And again, we have a lot of guys who probably aren't going to want to be traded. Ovechkin doesn't want to go, so Ovi will stay. Giroux can be sold. Atkinson can't go. Letty can't go. And William Carlson can't go. But Claude Giroux here uh, will sim this game against the Bruins, which we won three to nothing, so go figure. You know, we've sold before and then still made the playoffs. That very well could happen here. Very well could happen here. Let's take a look. A um, couple of deals here. Mr.'s ratings. He has Brad Norman as the top guy. Which isn't really surprising. Uh, Jonas Faff. Faffing about. Random goaltender. Anybody else here that had a B? Doesn't look like it. New nationality is Nino Niederreiter can now play for the U.S. Matt D'Agostini can play for Switzerland. John Ramage for Germany. Daniel Audette for Finland. Fair enough. All right, Claude Giroux. Let's shop Claude Giroux. I mean, he has 35 points in 41 games. I mean, he's still useful. Like, we moved Hunter Jones, who we randomly picked up off of waivers to get him. Uh, Boston's willing to give up a first round pick. We obviously can't turn that down. As much as I'd like to kind of keep Giroux, you know, turning down a first round pick for an aging veteran such as himself. Even if it's to send him back to Philadelphia, we can't turn that down. A lot of offers on a first round pick here for Giroux. Uh, so obviously we'll just see who has the worst record and make that move. Okay, so Vegas at 24 wins. Columbus at 20. Nashville at 19, so Nashville's ahead. Anaheim at 20. Tampa at 24. Arizona on 20. 
Edmonton on 23. New Jersey on 22. Islanders on 20. Calgary on 27. Buffalo on 22. It's tough, man. A lot of teams are very close towards the bottom half of the standings. I'd love to send you back to Philly, Claude, but I need to make sure I get as high of a pick as possible. So it's between Nashville, Dallas, and Detroit. And I think Detroit is the yeah, the only one listed as a rebuilder. We're going to send Claude Giroux. Again, 35 points in 41 games. He's been very good, but he's 36 years old. We're probably not going to make the playoffs this year. Uh, we turned Hunter Jones into Claude Giroux. Claude Giroux into a first-round pick. Feel pretty good about that. Giroux to the Red Wings. Done deal. We now have four first-round picks this year. I think Zach Aston Reese as well. 15 points in 36 games. Decent, but he's another guy that we could shed off of this roster. So we might as well. Uh, could get Kale Flurry. Preds had more weaknesses. Eh, well, too late now. Get a third round pick from Chicago. Which I like the idea of. Again, there's basically nobody there that I think I'd be overly interested in. I want draft picks. I want to make sure we got plenty of free space cap wise to weaponize next year in free agency. So Vegas, 24 wins. Edmonton on 23. Chicago on 12. We will gladly take that third round pick from Chicago for Zach Aston Reese. And then it comes down to what the hell do we do from there because there aren't any other veterans that we can get rid of aside from like Patrick Laine, who I don't want to move. So for forwards... I mean, for defense here, we do have seven, two goalies. So for forwards, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So really, I'm going to need to call up like one or two forwards. Genther's on two and a half star, but he's out for a month and a half. Lewinsky on two star, Stranjez on two, Ratu up to two and a half. Been much better with the bitch pigeons. Let's call him back up. Give him another chance. So again, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, we should be okay with 13. Worst case scenario, we'll also call up Adam Brooks. Be a 14th. So, I mean, not quite a full tank. Like, we're not completely selling everybody. Uh, but we sold some bit parts that, you know, we knew we'd have the ability to sell off. Uh, Montembeau. We could risk signing Montembeau for the rest of the season because we do have 21 million in cap. So worth shopping raw to. You know, that is genuinely a good question. Uh, I am going to offer Montembeau 7 million for one year. Make that 7.5. Make that 8. Eight and a half. This son of a bitch. All right, Montebo, eat pant. I'm done with you. There is the genuine question now of Ratu. I mean, he's down to four star apparently. Like we need to see if he can cut it. I mean, he's 22. He's got a little bit more time. But it is kind of a tough call now at this stage. When I mean, you look at the stats, Line is leading this team over a point per game, and then. After we shopped Giroux, it's plummeted. Nemesnikov on 24 points in 41 games. So, I mean, it's it's the Patrick Line show offensively. Goal scorers, Line and Quinn are the only guys over 10. Ovi has eight goals. So, a lot of young players who just haven't exactly adapted yet. We have to stay committed to the strategy of having them in the NHL. I mean, they're NHL caliber. They just haven't pulled it off. I mean, maybe you could question whether or not John Cooper's the guy to kind of make it happen. And if we were to look at potential head coaches here, I mean, Gerard Gallant's back out there. Ray Shiro, but Peter Laviolette is the only other guy, at least with that extreme well-known reputation. Again, Gallant's on a 17. 
for uh, coaching prospects. Definitely more of a forward coach than defense or goaltending. Of course, we fired him at the end of our first season because he did play Andre Vasilevsky in the playoffs. And then Peter Laviolette is only on a 15 for coaching prospects. And again, if you look at John Cooper, he was on a 16. So I don't know if there's a coach out there for us. I think at this stage, it's see what the team can do over the next month and uh, maybe revisit things. Again, we're just two points out of the playoffs right now. We could easily find ourselves back in the mix. It's just what the hell's going to happen from here. And I don't know the answer to it. I don't know the answer to it. We're going to see what happens. <laughs>